I, I'm waiting for the fourth before uh, film of the trilogy. Before, before what did this you know, title even have to? One of them. One of them is in a coma in a hospital and. <laughs> uh-huh. Before divorce or something like that, or <laughs> man, no, they're they're ninety two years old. Dead. They're ninety two years right. old. And they've been married brain for dead. seventy years, uh-huh. like, and they that's... still have better dialogue. So I'm going to put my quarter up right world. now and just say that I was just I thought this film was the best of all three of them. Absolutely, it was one hundred percent. I just thought it was just you know that if the first one was cute, they met in Vienna. It was cute. The second one was kind of more of a development thing, and I did kind of resent them because the fact that I thought they were just kind of rich a holes. This one is like full of consequence full of reality this is the most realistic couples fight i've ever seen in the movie ever ever, really ever. Good fight it was amazing I, it was just the, the, the way they put this together was just incredible and, and the way she keeps the leaving fight, and coming back have been uh-huh. married a really long time and they know exactly what to say to cut the other one yes right. they know each other's buttons and they push and, them man. and the way it goes from the um from the specific to the general is so typical of married you know couples who've been together a long time or married couples that it starts with what she said to my son on the phone and it just blows up into you're you want to move me back to um the united states and you don't care about my ambitions you know it's just like everything it comes was out. kind of minor too wasn't it it so was it was a little thing little thing just, just went nuclear it just it's it freaking snowballed to the end yeah yeah and the ebbs and flows of it where it was like super pissed and then nah, not so pissed i think they're gonna make up and now they're kind of almost like laughing and now they're really fucking pissed again it was, uh-huh. it was really good was really well when done. he just lays face down on the couch and she comes <laughs> back in she comes back in and starts and starts going in on him again <laughs> and and he doesn't say a word until she says i'm gonna put my head in a toaster like emily bronte and he turns his head slightly and he goes it was an oven <laughs> <laughs> that was good uh, toaster oven yeah <laughs> The, and well, then he brings it back, and uh, after that, and he says it would be easier for you for you to fit your head in a toaster than it would for you to be a subservient um, person right. to somebody. Yeah, right. Like, yeah, right. but, but I, the the thing I really liked about this is one, it actually to me, and it's not supposed to do this. Uh, maybe it's supposed to do this, but they didn't plan it it makes the other two movies feel like memories. Yeah. It feels like this couple is having those memories. Hmm. Like the first one's very sort of airy and, and hyper real in an unreal way. Hmm. And kind of dreamlike. Cause it's right. Like very dreamlike. And like, yeah. The second one has that dreamlike beginning where they reconnect and then sort of drifts more towards a real relationship. It moves away from that, like, you just met somebody, you think they're beautiful and whatever, whatever. And then this movie is the real world. Mm-hmm. Like, this is what's actually happening to them. Mm-hmm. And the, the way that he's able to reach back into the past, into the when they originally met and do all that stuff, and then, but then also change it in a way to be like, look, this is also me apologizing. This is also me saying that I understand what we need to work on and stuff like that. And her having that memory of them meeting and understanding that he is still that person. And they've both kind of lost sight of the fact that each other are still that person. They just have this other baggage that's sitting on top of them. Sure. Like, I, I really appreciated that about this movie. I also really appreciate all of the little moments that happen where you can see the fight coming a long uh-huh. way off. Yeah, yeah, all all the way back in the car, uh-huh. you know? Yeah. Starting there, and then dinner develops a little bit more. A couple of barbs are added to it. And you're kind of like, here we well, go. When they almost get into it with their just, friends. Yeah. Just, need, just, just needs the fuse lit. That's, yeah. that's right. Well, the fuse is lit. It's like it's like the beginning of Mission Impossible. This whole movie is just the fuse burning all the way across the screen. Sure, when he drops his son off at the airport at the beginning, the fuse right. is lit. Right. Yeah. I wrote in like Twitter that I was sad by the time the credit started because I knew that this is like this film is dealing in kind of like the I'd regret, seen this the, the regrets of bad decisions they've made in between the films. Yeah, I'd seen this before. I'd forgotten all of it because I realized I just blocked it out because it, <laughs> because no, I mean, it's it's almost like Linklater. I mean, I don't know whether this was intentional when they when they did the first one, but 
it really is like pulling the rug out from under you after the first two. Right. Like, they didn't they didn't know that they were gonna make this. Like oh, really? yeah. there was a conversation that um Ethan Hawk and Linkletter had in like 2011. And he was like, Yeah, if we film it next year, it'll come out nine years from the last one. Mm-hmm. And um and so Is that how was, far, far apart the first two were? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And so they were like, okay, well, we need to write it. So over the course of, I think, like 10 weeks, the three of them got together and wrote the movie. Yeah, all three got screenwriting, I noticed. Yeah, yeah. because they wrote, they did the last one too. And then apparently did a bunch of writing on the first one and didn't get credit for it. Right, right, Mm -hmm. right. But I almost wonder, like, nine years. Did you almost wonder, did they go, well, if if we're going to do the third one, let's really, like, get the, like, like, let's make this one real. Yeah, let's wait. People who've been married for nine years, right? Well, and they're both, and and I, I think also one of the reasons that this might have affected me a little bit more is like this. I'm almost this age, like I'm 38. You know, like yeah. they're they're 41. So right. like I'm I'm kind of seeing where they are emotionally in terms of like looking forward and backwards at the same time. You know, mm-hmm. like I'm not young. You know, I'm not old, but I'm not young either. Right. Yeah. Like that's not that's you're you're in this weird place where almost you don't even want to say like I don't really want to say I'm middle aged either. Right. Like I'm I'm in this weird sort of limbo where you know your late 30s to early 40s is kind of where are you? You know, mm-hmm. and I don't have kids. You know, I'm not yeah. I'm not in a relationship. So. It, it is it is one of those kind of like looking backwards and forwards things. Well, this film is like, it's kind of the old aphorism, like the, this is the the uh, the baggage of, uh, the, the wagon of love breaking under the baggage of life kind of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's really about how love evolves. You know, in the first film, it's pure chemistry. It's all about right. just these magnetic attraction to two attractive people and just like that. The second one is that rekindling that chemistry again, bringing back that literal thoughtless, like, attraction and you know you have some catching up to do and there's life in between and things like that and some complications but it's still good chemistry this is more love is middle-aged love this is more compromise this is more of the you love somebody but you have to understand there's limitations to everything you know and right. you have to understand that you have to really give and to get and it's more of that it's that's that's in here it's, it feels very real it would have been a terrible choice if they had tried to make it another one of those like the first two yeah the you know, and three. Yeah. It, it just it wouldn't have made sense well that's what and i'm saying I love about the being... way it was set up that the first scene they're not together he's in the airport dropping off his son and so right. you don't know what their status is until he walks outside and sees her waiting by the car and it's like right. ah okay they're together and then they get in the car and there's the two girls in the back seat and it's like, two oh, impossibly ah. beautiful children in the yes, back yes right <laughs> i mean that's what that's what the two of them would produce Oh right. yeah, possibly beautiful kids. That's right. for sure. Yeah. One thing about this is like from a screenwriting perspective, you know, when you're writing a screenplay, you're writing a story, you know, you got 50, 60, 70 scenes sometimes. You know, you're just throwing and it this in. This one has four. This one has less than 12. Yeah. yeah. What a beautiful way to make a movie. Right. Just, you know, just it is you don't need a lot that keep throwing away scenes. You just make the ones you have important and make them and make them significant. Well, that's like, how you make a movie this good for three million dollars with stars that are this big. Yeah, he just went ahead and did it. You know, there's there is you know the uh, the the driving the driving scene was was impressive. It went on and on and on and on. It really was. And, uh, so and you know what there, a lot of dialogue to memorize, man. I was like, all oh, I can think God. of is like there's dinner and there there's the the driving. There's the dinner. Then there was the hotel, and then there was after the hotel. I, there's a couple more in the middle there. I think they're walking around a, some ruins, well, like the one behind. They walk Chris. around Greece. There's the yeah. sitting on the patio talking about his book idea. Yeah, this long walk and talk. Yeah. Me. There's but the very walk- short. There's the very short scene where they're in the grocery store, and then there's the very short scene where they're checking into the hotel, and the woman comes up and asks for the autographs. Right. That's right. right. Yep. Yeah. That was great. I think they have no costume changes this entire movie, right? Well, not not for not for Ethan. No, he's in fact his shirt was untucked like, half the movie, which was great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like when... yeah, she she changes she changes yeah. from this to that, but yeah, right. yeah. right. I mean, the the movie it's interesting. Like when when he when he when they finish the fight and she goes and he comes outside to go meet her and starts trying to charm her. Mm. 
and it kind of goes back and forth like you can see okay at least he's trying and then she gets annoyed and then she says well again I'll, I'll give him the benefit because he's trying again and then she gets more annoyed and the movie really does sort of leave you kind of like the last one did I could go either way on whether these two are going to be together a month from now. Yeah. <laughs> Fair question. Yeah. I know. I think that, that he kind of, he kind of, kind of, I think it worked. I think it, his strategy, like, we well, you know what I'm here. I'm charming you. I'm telling you beautiful. And that, you know, we, we have a great you know thing, but you know, I'm not going to keep coming back over and over again. You have to realize that I'm not like, a well, that's, he says like, fine, mm-hmm. if you don't love me, then I'll go. Yeah, pretty much. You know, uh-huh. he folds up and then he's got it folded up in his fingers and he's like, I did this because, you know, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, if you don't love me, then I'll go. Right. Like, like that's, they're both looking at each other, realizing that this is the final chance. Right. Like, you do it now says, or you don't do it. If she he really room, believes that they're that close to the edge of ending this thing, uh, would any of you guys try the same sticky <laughs> opening line that he did? If you were really worried about this being the right. end, right. I mean, if was, that's I mean, if that's the way we met to begin with, maybe I, I guess. But yeah. that's I I well. The thing is, I've never met anyone that cynic, way. But I just figured they had this fight like every couple of months. Yeah, that's, <laughs> you know what? That's Jim's that is, probably right. This might be like a monthly thing. Yeah, Jim is making a good point there. This could be kind of how they pr- conduct their lives. We don't right. know that. Right, right. <laughs> and she says something pretty heavy during the fight about like I think the relationship's over, it's not working or something. And he comes out and he's I sitting you at the table and he says, Oh, I, I pretty much didn't take that part seriously. Or yeah. something along <laughs> something along those he, lines. He uh, took the critique, her critique of his love making seriously. <laughs> Which was pretty funny. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's just kind of like kind of stuck Just kiss titty titty, go for the pussy. Yeah. Kiss, kiss, titty, titty, pussy, right? <laughs> you know, one thing, well, is, and then of course, his response to that is, I'm a man of simple pleasures, where mm-hmm. it's just like, You fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> one thing is that he would just remember he described his, he was describing his book as like uh, this little kind of vignettes of various people with various mental illnesses. Yeah, it sounded terrible. His first book. <laughs> all pitches sound terrible. I know. I'm sure it was great. It was charming when I read it, but it sounded awful when I was describing it. <laughs> but the thing is, I don't know if he was talking about the limitations of the fact that his authorship is based on mining his own life. I don't know. Maybe it is. No, but he says in the he says in the fight that the last two books or the, the book that he just finished and the book that he's working on don't have anything to do with his yeah. life. Right, right. Yeah, that uh, pitch is probably done. why it's so tough. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, you wrote the easy ones. No, it's just really well. This was so well done. I give it a good. I, I give it a thumbs up. I just don't. It was sort of painful to watch for like. Did we? Did point. we? Did, I don't think we got Jim's corner though because he Not said something you, negative no. at the beginning. Hey, go ahead, take it, Jim. You know, I, I think all three of these movies are really below uh, Link Letter. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. I I just really. Yeah, the first one was like too fantasy like for me, and this one was too real, I guess. Oh, hold on, we got to do that. We have a Jared now. I I just remember that like when he gets into the car and they start driving, I was like, oh my god, it's it's been five or ten minutes now. The whole tell me the whole movie is not them driving in the car. That's exactly what Sheila said. (laughs) It just turns into. They it just, just turns into the, the chase. It just turns into the chase at a certain point where it's just the two of them in the car and they're going all the way to Mexico. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, or I thought it could be the born ultimatum or whatever. <laughs> I'm go. sorry, guys. Did we? I thought we were starting at 7 30. Uh, there, there was a memo. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I, I'm also okay. sorry that we're, we're, we're wrapping up on, um, on before midnight. So, do you have anything to add? Um, well, I'm sorry that I missed the conversation. Okay. Um, it's very, it's mostly, it's mostly quite positive. They loved it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I um, thought it was really one of the best one. Painful of all third act. Yeah. So yeah, Jim's, Jim's not impressed. Scott thinks it's the best of the three. Is that right? I, I do, do as well. I and think it was just, just emotionally and, and just. I think it's link later and the other two pulling the rug out from under the audience. Who's like totally bought into this fantasy version of romance for the first two movies wow that's it with some real reality for the third one 
Well, but that's what I was saying about it, the third movie making the first two movies feel like memories. Like you're going to cut out, you're going to cut out the bad parts of a memory like that. So, sure. like, you know, maybe the sex wasn't great in the, you know, in the, the first night, maybe when, well, and, and he says like, we met, we met up again. And she's like, we didn't meet up again. I went to find you because you wrote a book about me. Yeah, like, like he, he cuts that part of the memory out. And in the, in the second one, it's, implied that it wasn't that direct like she just noticed that he was there and like decided oh i'm gonna go see him and ask him if the book's about her kind of thing but like now she's saying definitively yes i found out that you were going to be there and i went and found you and you know to talk to you about this mm -hmm. and so it's yeah it, it does make it feel more like those were a little hazier than this which was right. very down the line realistic mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, uh, also technically this film you know that the first two were shot on film and then it kind of like kind this of is kind very of, crisp this, yeah this is yeah this is uh, those are a little bit soft and a little bit kind of hazy looking especially the second film which was kind of like this film it was filmed through a um a nylon you know uh and so it had a kind of nice hazy flatness to it this one's just digital sharp and you can tell that link later just says you know what and put you in the car and you drive as long and talk as long as you want we're not yeah. gonna, we're not gonna run out of film and the, the scenes right. went on a very long time because they knew they didn't have to worry about watching the reels and um so it was it had a nice natural feel to it in that respect that's the technology helping the story out in a lot yeah of that's, that's a positive thing that we've gotten from digital is yes, the ability absolutely. to just continue to film something right like that um the true detective season one that one continuous shot that oh, they do fuck, going through that so town oh, in yeah. texas yeah. Uh -huh. and they're just are. coming around and they're around and around cool. and around that entire time because it doesn't matter how fucking long that scene is because you're not going to run out of tape Right. You just kind of keep, you know, putting hands in a hard drive and just keep moving. And you can do it 20 right. times uh -huh. too, because yeah. you can just go delete and then <laughs> run it again. <laughs> that's exactly right. Or, or, or you just, well, you have a DIT guy on the side that's like, download it, new card, boom. Right. Yeah, again. exactly. And have a little so. stack of cards back there, taking out the wrapper and taking out the thing and jamming them in there and just keep going. Exactly. I, I guess I'll just add that, you know, it's obvious I chose these because they're some of my favorite films, and uh, I just hope you guys enjoyed them. Oh, I did. It was nice. Old, it was good to revisit them. Yeah, I, I, I mentioned these guys earlier before you showed up. That like I'd seen this, I'd forgotten fucking all of it, and I think it's because it was so painful to watch that I just blocked it out. This one made me like the other two better. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I, I think I'll, it's I'll a second nice, that. I think it's I'll a nice ending. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice ending. Yeah, it's the only one that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are they done? Is, are they are they officially finished with this? Next year would be nine years, and there's and been no saying. In the meantime, we've had one, so. Oh, okay. In the meantime, we've had Boyhood, which almost could be this character. Mm. Yeah, this much guy. older. Yeah. We kind of wonder, like, is it covered ground? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't. I I don't think they need to either. I think this is a really natural conclusion for this series. Like, yeah, I think so. And you and you can interpret it however you want. You can, as Jim said, it could be something they do every month. It could be that they break up, you know, right after oh, this. Yeah. It could be that they live together forever. And eighty-two-year-old her is saying that was us going through the woods. You know, like it doesn't matter. You can you can bring whatever finality you want to it. Yeah, true. starts off all fucking Cinderella and Prince Charming, and in the end, we all end up the fucking Bickersons. Yeah, the Bickers, exactly right. Yeah, but but there is a like yeah, yeah with like, catheters like, and colostomy bags. But like Tad just said, I mean, at the end of this, you know, See you later. It well, it's ambiguous, and there's a you know, if you're if you're a hopeful romantic, just like the question in the bookstore and the second one, like, what do you think yeah. of this ending? This yeah. could be okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> Mm -hmm. well, considering the but, compromise that love becomes when you became in that, that age i think that they're just kind of like well we're gonna have more of these fights so yeah. let's okay chalk it up and move on yeah. or maybe yeah, they got have, this nice hotel room oh well, yeah maybe they have different different fights huh? you know? i don't know if this made me want to visit greece or not i'm not it, it, it looked good but it also looked kind of wrecked <laughs> i'm not sure exactly <laughs> but, you know so i'm not sure about that well it's it, it, it's kind of wrecked but for a different reason 
Yeah. But yeah, it's been it's been used thoroughly for five six thousand years, so it's well, also wrecked. the IMF. That's a whole other thing. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. So thumbs on this or what? Oh, yeah, thumbs up, thumbs up on the okay. on the three as a as a whole. I give it th- thumbs up. Uh-huh. I think um, it's one of those trilogies that works. Yeah, like every one of them has something going for it individually, and then as a collective, it it's a pretty solid piece of work. 